Hello, YouTubers and all those who happen to watch. Hope you guys are all doing quite well, nonetheless. So, oh gosh, almighty. So, got some pickups here. And, uh, some stuff is sort of just toys of sorts. And the others are games. So, I'm going to get the, the, uh, some of the toys or the figurines out of the way real quick here. And the first thing I got here was actually a, a gift from my mom. She... I uh, got this for me because I was feeling a little bit down, which I still am, but um, she got this for me at the store, and this is one of those tabletop monkey things, which uh, it's pregnancy, it's Christmas pregnancy monkey. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's okay, cool little thing here. Um, you put it on top of your tabletop, and it just dances and does music, which has copyright music in this, I believe, so I'm not going to press the button, but not too shabby. Uh, she also got me another monkey here, which is, these are sock monkeys, which are starting to get really popular in the States nowadays. And, uh, I actually named this one Tori. No, I don't molest the thing. I don't do anything sick like that, you sick mofos. Only to you. But, uh, anyway. So, this monkey right here is not too shabby either. Um, the reason I named it Tori is so that way I would have a remembrance next to the picture right there. The Shrine. Ooh. See, I could have a sense of humor, assholes. Anyway, <laughs> getting aside. So, monkey is pretty much named Tori. It's all polka dotted, as you can already see. I'm holding a monkey, and I'm spanking the poor monkey right now, and you guys aren't appreciating that too much. Especially Peta, which uh, Peta can go to hell. They're hypocritical people. So, anyway, moving on to the next figurine I got here. Which this is from Ben 10. Checking the clock here to make sure this thing doesn't freeze or crash or anything like that. And uh, again, I'm not, I don't watch the show at all. Uh, this was given to me by my mom. She just knows I like collecting figurines and some of a random thing, I suppose. But um, it's pretty cool. I like the uh, design of this character. It's Ultimus something, or Ultimate. Um, I don't know what his name is, so that's what his name's going to be. Ultimate, I don't know what his name is. Most people probably insulted who do watch uh, Ben 10 a lot with their kids or something. I don't know. But uh, the inner man-child to me has no freaking clue what this is. <laughs> but pretty cool figurine. I have this sitting right there right now. I also have to organize most of my you know collectibles you see on that shelf over there. So probably the next time you see a video by me, uh, most of that's going to be gone. I'm going to put that in a box somewhere so that way I can make room for other things. Because around out of room a little bit. As you can see right here, my DVD is starting to stack up a little bit here, too. But, okay. Next things I got here are actually... I believe these are three. Are these three? Oh, shit. Yep, they are. And uh, these are some more of those slug zombies I uh, received. And uh, these are, again, from a local store here. These are the Christmas edition ones, which I'm actually collecting these slowly but surely. So I got that. Christmas ones are pretty cool. I like the uh, the Scrooge and the uh, Nutcracker one. And this is Captain Payback, which uh, actually also comes in this one too, which is uh, the regular edition of season or series two, which comes in the Indiana Jones style one, which I really like. That they have one character at least out of the the bundle for each. Uh, figurine pack that actually has some sort of pop culture reference in there, like loosely parodied. And I, I, I just like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, this last one here is actually a Coke Hogan uh, zombie, which I believe we, I, my mom bought a couple extras of these figurines, uh, duplicates of these, so she could probably put these on eBay at some point. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know something mean, Gene? Oh my god, Jim! So, also got this box right here. Try not to get nasally because it's a freaking... So, I don't know what it is, around around 5 or 6 a.m. Like my, like my allergies go into overdrive. It's just like they decide they want to speak out about my uh, me breathing right. So, um, yeah, also got this right here. Uh, the store, as we're buying these, particularly these... Um, we're, we're like, hey, you need something to carry those? And he goes around and grabs this and puts them in there. And he got, my, the guy, my mom goes, you sure? And then he goes, yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. So, 
pretty much got this now, and I'm uh, probably going to put my Wii games in this, so it would be pretty, pretty cool to put those in there. I think that definitely would be awesome. Probably going to put these safely somewhere for now until I can display them somewhere else in my room. Probably going to put them like on a shelf somewhere around the uh, edges, as you can see. Somewhere around there. But Cool figurines. So the Family Dollar lately has been doing something I probably my brain exploded about and try and get the see it's just the ref it's just because that lights on it's like too much over like saturation of light so for now I'm gonna salute you like this with a big hand so for now well no you don't but anyway they have a dollar Blu-rays there. And uh, I picked up this 1989 movie. I've never watched it yet. I'm probably going to sit down and watch it just for the sake of it. Because it's a dollar Blu-ray. You can't pass up a dollar Blu-ray. And uh, this is pretty much how it comes in. It has a recyclable thing. And these are made by uh, Mill Creek. Which uh, they pretty much just dumped off all their Blu-rays to the family dollar. And some of the movies are pretty good. They have like the a uh, couple of the classic Ernest movies, which I'm actually looking for those. So if anyone finds them at that local Family Dollar and wanna, you know, I would give them the three dollars for the movies, and plus shipping too. But um, yeah, I mean that's not too bad at all. I mean for a dollar, you can watch an old. These are old movies, by the way. These are much older. I believe they have the uh, some other movies too. Um, I can't remember their names, but they were. Shoot, what were they? Uh, there was something, something and something. Hey, Penny. So they practically put those out. A, I was like, there's an extra copy of this. There's an extra copy of this right here, which is starting uh, to flow into the video games. Everyone's like, whew. For mediocre items, two decent items, I guess. Uh, this is an expansion to Heroes of Might Magic Heroes. Oh, Heroes of Might Magic Heroes. That Heroes of Might Magic. I'm butchering the English language slowly but surely. Before you know it, I'll have my own language going pretty soon. And you guys can all adapt to it if you want to be free of charge. Whew, okay. So, Might and Magic Heroes. I had to look at, I had to ignore this big word because that messes with me a little bit. <laughs> Might and Magic Heroes. Hammers of Fate, which is pretty much a campaign or an expansions uh, pack, which has... Um, dwarves in it. I do have the orc one, I believe, or the evil side one, and this one isn't a standalone quite like that one was. I'm just sitting over in the back. Uh, these are the old school uh, CD case ones, which is a pretty... I like the uh, fat, these old school cases, see? It's all three discs, three CDs, <laughs> versus just them saving a lot of money and using DVDs, but a lot of people at the time when this game came out did not have DVDs all right away, so they decided... We'll keep them on CD for now. You know, it's not that lot of a space anyway, and it's just an expansion. And this is fun. It says Windows 2000 XP only. Oh boy. <laughs> so probably at some point, gonna definitely grab uh, part five of Heroes and uh, give it a play. So this is pretty cool. I mean, I tried out the zombie, not the zombie, the uh, orc one. And that one's decent. But yeah, for a buck. Not too bad for these two uh, finds. The next items here are gaming related. I'm going to get to this one last because that one I'm going to ramble about a little bit. And I uh, got this to the other day. And uh, this is Soul Calibur 4. A little bit older games, but uh, really affordable. And this one right here was a must to grab for the exclusives for the PS3. And my shirt's riding up on my side here. It's making me cold. I'm like, brr. And that, of course, is Heavenly Sword, with more short gameplay than Resident Evil 6. So what I did there? Anyway, so, not too bad, I got these two. And the final item I got here, which was uh, typically supposed to be shipped along with these, but a little bit sooner, was the Devil itself. Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? Oh gosh. See, some people are going to look up my stuff on Rapture and be like, You ever played the single player multiplayer yet? I will. 
I will. I just like to play the game to multiplayer for a little while, then move over to zombies, then over to single player, complete the single player when I can, then go back to multiplayer again. And it's like you never put too much effort in the box art. I mean, most people probably don't care. That's what their motive was with this. And as you can see right there, it's like they didn't even put no effort into the back of this box art. And they say Nuketown 2025, right? But it's not included in the match list at all. I mean, I understand that most people are not going to have Nuketown because they didn't pre-order it or anything of that nature. But I was expecting a lot more than that. And then they, they did something even funnier, and they decided to add season passes rather than that elite status thing where you get the premium version of elite. And I don't understand why they did that on the next, the next following year when they decided they announced elite. I mean, they're probably still keeping elite standard where you can check your stats and all that stuff, which is fine, you know, cool, whatever, touch my nipples. So, again, that's not a big deal. It's just, I don't understand the logic behind that. If you already have something in your Activision, why are you switching over to a different service to charge for the DLC within one low rate? I don't understand that. I guess they want more money out of you because the Elite only covers Modern Warfare 3, and they want more money out of you again because you're still you know, feeling the burn from that Elite. You go off and buy the S.A.S series or the season which I'm probably not going to buy the DLC for this game at all unless it's gifted to me some magically way I'm not buying that because it's so far multiplayer is not as good as the other Call of Duties Modern Warfare 3 was okay but it wasn't as great I mean again it's just it just feels like the multiplayer experience while they're adding interesting and decent ideas don't quite get formulated as well and that's my problem with the game because I'm one of those one of those uh, those suckers for these type of games. I like competitive shooting games. I like to play these type of games. They're okay to me. I mean, I understand and absolutely agree with most of the, sh the stuff people say. Then why'd you buy it? Because I don't torture myself when I want to have fun with my friends. Which eventually my friends and I will be sitting down and playing this in a group together and do some damage, I guess. The single player as well, I mean, most of the campaigns for Call of Duty aren't too bad at all. That's what I like about the games Coralie as well. I mean, that's it's especially of like three core elements. Again, I'm not here to bash the campaign because I have to play it tomorrow or later on today. I probably will. And then I'll play some of the zombies because I heard the zombies are actually quite cool. The campaign is okay as well. It has interesting aspects and elements to it. But the multiplayer is... As much as people will say I'm only merely complaining like a bandwagon of typical generic complaints, is the camping got intensified even more. People complained about that a lot. They wished that they could push out the game where it would be more competitive. They did that. But what they did was they enabled camping a lot more worse than what it already was. So they have a shock grenade or a shock placement, uh, or a shock stick as I call it, and you throw it against a wall, you could throw I mean, that's kind of a cool idea. You could throw it at some random location or land on whatever surface it hits. And if someone wa an enemy walks by it, it shocks them. But if someone plants it into a doorway, you're shocked. They'll see those two little hit markers. They could spin around and kill you. It's, again, it enables camping. I mean, you could throw it at the, don't get me wrong, you could throw it at an uh, enemy and it'll shock the shit out of them. You could rush in there as quickly as possible to take him out. Absolutely, I see the strategy behind that. But at the same time, it enables camping. I mean, the Bouncing Betty is a Bouncing Betty. It can't quite stop the Bouncing Betty. You can see through it with those little t equipment uh, x-ray vision thing. Cool. You can avoid it then. But past that, it becomes a Bouncing Betty 2.0 because everyone in the game uses the Bouncing Betty. They just throw it around like it's like crack cocaine. They go throw it around like a Frisbee and just land it out somewhere and pretty much kill you with it. They don't use C4. They use the Bouncing Betty, you know? <laughs> And it's just a, it's a, it's not a win-win situation. It's definitely not. I mean, most of the ideas you could tell as well from most of the weapons was borrowed from Battlefield 3, which, again, I prefer that they did that because most of the ideas with Call of, uh, I'm sorry, not Call of, uh, Battlefield 3 were okay with the guns. It made more sense. You know, you're able to toggle between auto and semi, and, again, there's just so many inconsistencies here and there with the game, and the, I don't know. 
If you could find this at least 30 bucks, that'd say be worth it if you're into Call of Duty games. But past that so far, because most the reason why I'm saying that is because most people play some multiplayer. Most people do. You have that small bracket who just enjoy the campaign, play zombies, and wipe their hands with it and walk away. And some other people who are competitive and just like playing multiplayer poorly uh, pretty much get it just for that sole reason. And again, it's not a strong game when it comes to just only wanting to play a multiplayer game. Go play Black Ops, go play Call of Duty 4, go play the other ones. You know, you probably have a lot of fun time versus this. Don't get me wrong, it's an okay game, but it's something that disappointed me a little bit. And I have yet to play Zombies and Campaign, so I have to fully play those to say if it's great or bad. So I probably will have fun in the Campaign and the Zombies, but... Again, it's a, I would say it's definitely a 6.0 based off that alone. Sorry, I mean, a short campaign, as I hear, is a very short... This is ver this one's right here is very short. This one's a very... Wow, it's like a typical nerd right now. Oh, God! Ah, uh, my nose is all getting all... Oh, jeez, I gotta use my inhaler now. I don't know. <sighs> but anyway, guys, enough for me right now. Black Ops 2, if you're coolly pacing on off multiplayer, is... Meh. So, take it easy, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and take care. My nipples are amazing.